Hey guys, so um, kind of impromptu, last minute, unscheduled um, handle demo that I wanted to do for you guys. Um, I promised this a while ago and I just haven't gotten the chance to do it. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make uh, this style of handle that um, I've been making lately. Um, I learned this from Sarah Pike, uh, a workshop with her. If you haven't seen her work, I highly recommend checking it out. Um, you can kind of see she does these handles much better than I do. Um, I'm still kind of figuring out exactly how I want to do these and the process that works for me. So um, this is what I'm going to show you. So I have some pieces here that are kind of leather hard, ready for a handle. Um, just like these mugs, that's basically what I'm making right now. Um, and what I'm gonna do first is grab my clay. So I want clay that is not really super soft for this because if you are, there's a lot of like pooling and manipulating of the clay, um, making this kind of handle and if it's really soft, it's gonna fall apart super fast. And if it's really hard, you're gonna get those crazy cracks and stuff. So you kind of have to just know your clay body pretty well for these and um, practice and see what works for you. So I've got some clay here that's just been sitting around. It's not, not too soft. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, and um, if anyone else is in here, just popped in, I am, um, going to show you how to do these kind of handles. These are, I haven't been able to figure out a real like term for them. They're kind of hand built, pinched, maybe you would call it like a pinched handle. Um, so what I'm going to do, and every mug or piece that you're putting a handle on is a little bit different. So you're going to have to kind of figure out exactly how much clay you're going to need for each shape and everything. But in general, what you're gonna do is grab some clay and I kind of roll it into a ball shape. So we're gonna get kind of a cylindrical, like a ball kind of a shape right there. And then I'm gonna roll it kind of like a coil. And I'm just gonna kind of smooth it out, make sure it's like nice and coil shaped. And depending on the mug or the piece that I'm gonna put the handle on, that's gonna determine how uh, thick that this that I want this and how wide and all that stuff. So for these, it's a pretty smallish handle, so I'm not gonna need a lot. And you can see they're not very wide handles that I put on here. So I'm gonna roll this out to like, I don't know, hot dog-ish uh, width. And once that's rolled out, I'm gonna smooth any little cracks or anything like that just to save myself some time. And then I'm going to cut this to about, I don't know, that's maybe like an inch. And then it's like kind of hot dog width there. And, um, what I'm gonna do with that is I'm just kind of rolling it just to round out the sides. I hope you guys can see that. Um, round it out a little bit. And then I'm gonna actually use a rolling pin. And what I wanna do with this shape is start to give it the actual shape of a handle. So I want it to be thicker on the top and the bottom and thinner in the middle, right? So I kind of want it to be like a dog bone shape so what I'm gonna do is lay it on here on my rolling pin and I'm gonna roll it like this. So it gets that curve in the middle and then the top and the bottom will stay thicker and then the middle will start to get thinner. And I'm gonna have this dog bone sort of shape, if you will. And then I'm holding the rolling pin too because it'll roll around. So I'm just kind of giving it a little bit of that. And then, so it looks about like that, top, top and bottom are thicker. And then what I'm actually gonna do is, if you can see that, I'm gonna drop it down on a flat surface and it's gonna flatten that side out. So I'm just gonna give it one of those and flip it over and do that again on the other side, maybe one or, once or twice more. So you can see now it's more of that top and bottom are thicker, middle's thinner, um, 
and it's got that kind of dog bone shape. So from there, what I'm gonna do, because ultimately this handle got a little messed up, but this is kind of what it is gonna look like before you actually attach it onto the mug. So we're kind of going for that. So we've got our dog bone, it's kind of flattened out a little bit. And then I'm going to, if you guys can see this pretty well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of push it down on the table and flatten it out. And then I'm gonna use my fingers, make sure you guys can see this. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna flatten it out a little bit and I'm gonna use my fingers to just pinch and push down to kind of give it some body at the bottom. And that's creating this part where it's kind of flattened out and thicker at the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna press it down like that. And then I'm gonna pinch just like that where you can actually see kind of the triangle shape. So it's gonna be thicker in the middle and thinner on the outside where my fingers are making that triangle and I'm just gonna pinch it up. So I'm gonna pinch, move up, pinch, move up, pinch, move up. And I can kind of determine how thick, how wide this handle is gonna be by how much I press in. Um, I don't want it to end up being um, really thick of a handle. I want it to keep like a little bit thicker in the middle, but thinner on the outside. So I'm gonna go in and kind of smooth out that middle part too, um, to make sure it's not gonna go too crazy. And luckily this table is actually pretty sticky when the clay's on there. So I can actually like kind of stick it down and pull up a little bit like that, where you're almost kind of pulling it like you would a normal handle, but you have a little more control of it this way. And I'm just putting water in there. This clay's actually a little bit stiff now that I've, um, now that I've kind of rolled it out and everything. So then you're gonna flip it over to the other side, and you're gonna do that same thing where you're pushing it down so it you know is stable. And then you're gonna get in there with your fingers and really push down to create uh, that extra clay around the top and the bottom that's actually gonna attach to your mug. So. You can kind of decide like how hard do you want to push down? How much clay do you want at that attachment point? So you could make this very obvious and really big um, on your mug if you want to, or it can be a little more subtle. This one's a little more subtle of a clump of clay at the top and bottom. So, all right, so I'm gonna continue, press that down, I'm creating that top and bottom, and then I'm gonna do that pinching motion all the way up to actually bring the clay up a little bit and then I'm gonna kinda smooth it out with my fingers and this is where having like the clay a little bit stiffer and having it actually stick to this table is helping me a lot. So I can kinda do that. And that's kinda the beginning of this. So what I saw both sides pretty much done and then I'm gonna pick it up and look at it and see, you know, is this a good size, a good width for my mug? So you can see it needs to be a little bit longer and a lot of the actual length that you're going to get making these handles is once you attach it on here you're going to actually stretch it out on the mug um, so we don't need it to be fully the actual length and size that we need it um, yet so <clears throat> i want this to be a little bit longer so that when i put it on there the curve doesn't crack too much if that makes sense so once i have it about here what I'm gonna do is get a little bit of water in case I need it on my finger. And I'm just gonna kind of press like this and slowly curve it. I'm gonna curve it now because when I attach the top to the mug and it's if it's sticking straight out and then I try to curve it, it's gonna crack really bad. So I just wanna slowly kind of curve it and I'm gonna put some water on the outside part while I'm curving it so I keep from getting any of those little um, cracks. And then as I'm just like observing it and moving forward here, I'm just, I'm thinking this is a little wide, so I'm just gonna smush it. And it's kind of a process of you like figuring out um, how this works for you and what you need to do for the specific piece that you're making. But this is kind of the general gist of how to do this. So I'm smoothing it out now, it's nice and curved. So it's pretty much ready to go on the mug. So when I attach these, because you, we, what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach it and then we're gonna continue to work with it and widen it out and change the shape. So because we're doing that, the attachment 
to the mug needs to be really good so that it's not gonna pop off. So what I find is, um, you know, I'll get in there and just score it however you normally do. And then I put just like a little bit of water, not too much. I don't use slip, it's too slidey. It's gonna slip around on there. And just like a little bit of water and the scoring. And then I'm gonna slip this, or I'm gonna score this too. And then just like dip my finger a little bit in the water and just do a little bit on there. So then I'm gonna attach it like I normally would. Stick it on there. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a wiggle because again, like I need this seal to be really nice and strong because I wanna be able to pull and move this handle once it's on here. So I'm pushing, I'm wiggling, and then I feel like it's on there pretty well. And then I'm gonna score bottom, do the same thing. And I'm gonna do a little bit of water, not too much, cause then it's gonna slide around. And then if you can see. So you can tell like this is not what I want this handle to look like, right? But I'm getting it attached onto the pot first and then I'm going to um, change the shape of it and work with it from here. Cause this is not what I want it to look like. Um, so I'm gonna wiggle that on there. I'm gonna make sure that's really nice and sealed on. And once I feel like it's on there enough, that's not gonna pop off. And you can let it sit for a couple minutes if you're not sure, and just let it kind of soak in together and um, become one before you start messing with it. But just don't let it dry out too much because we still wanna manipulate this. So now, this is the part that's gonna be kind of hard to show you guys because I hold it a little bit differently um, when I'm doing this by myself, but because you guys need to see it, I'm, we're, we're gonna figure this out together. Um, April, so you're not actually smoothing the two pieces together, just the score and slip is enough. Yes, because kind of the signature part of this, the look of this handle is that you can kind of tell where it's attached and there's not a lot, sometimes I'll smooth it a little bit if I need to, um, but you kind of have that nice, uh, where you can see where the handle's been attached and it's not like a super smooth transition. So yeah, I just scored it, put a little bit of water, attached it, done. I'm not gonna smooth it unless some of this starts to pop off as I'm manipulating it. Um, sometimes that happens if you don't get a good enough seal on here. So we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna just, I kind of, just so you guys can see, I'm really just dipping my fingers in water and kind of sponging them off a little bit just so I have a little bit of water on my fingers. I don't wanna to introduce too much water into this. So what I'm gonna do, if you can see, so we need to make this obviously longer. So we're gonna pull some clay out, we're gonna shape it, we're gonna give it like those tapered edges with this move. So I'm gonna get in here just like I did when I was pinching it before and I'm just gonna kind of like get in there and I'm moving the mug and my fingers and I'm just kind of like squishing, stretching a little bit. And then I'm gonna do the equal thing over here. So I am getting those, so you can see I'm getting that like tapered side and then you can see it's pretty prominent that middle piece because I'm not pressing very hard there that that's coming out a little bit more and I can come in there and smooth that out if I need to. But right now I'm gonna keep it and I'm just gonna come in here and I'm getting those tapered edges by doing this. And then I'm gonna grab a little more water and then you can come in here and actually stretch the length of your handle with your finger like this. Or if you really need to pull up some, see how thick that is at the bottom. I actually, I wanna kinda of get in there and move that. So I'm just slowly grabbing it and pinching it and moving it so it's kind of like you're pulling a handle, but it's a little bit different. I think this is easier, personally, um, than pulling a handle first and then attaching it. I think this gives you a little more like uh, license to kind of see what is gonna look good on your pot and change it while it's on there. So you're not super committed until it's done. So <clears throat> I'm gonna continue 
to use my fingers just like that and I'm getting on there and kind of stretching it and pushing it and pulling it and moving it um, and then I'm going to do equal amount on that side and then I'll kind of get in there in the middle and pull and manipulate it to make sure I have the actual size handle I want and then I'm going to get in there and if it starts to get too wet sometimes I'll let it uh, sit and dry out a little bit before I get back in there if it gets too wet it's just every little touch that you do on it is going to show um, and it just gets annoying so <clears throat> I'm just stretching it out like this and then pulling it up when I get up here to kind of create that shape that I like and you can see it's got the thicker top and the thicker bottom it's nice and thin in the middle it's got the tapered edges that are nice and comfortable and then the other trick I've learned to make this look a little more normal right now it doesn't look right to me there's something missing about it so I'll get in there with a finger and I'll actually kind of like push outwards this tapered end if that makes sense and just bring it out a little bit and it just makes it look a little more normal. I'm not really sure how else to explain that, but I hope you can see what I'm doing. Um, and then you can change pretty much anything about this shape once you have it on here. So I'm gonna just, I'm doing that same thing where I'm just kinda pulling that out a little bit on the side. And I've got my shape about where I want it to be. You can see, this is a little bit thick um, maybe a little bit thicker than what I would have wanted, but this is where we are. They're all going to be a little bit different. Um, and I did have this part down here start to pull up a little bit on me as I was putting pressure and pulling it. So if that happens, what I did is I just went back in and just kind of smushed it down. And if it's really popping up, I'll get some water on my finger and I'll let like a drop of water on the pot and it'll just sink down in there. And then I'll kind of reattach it and give it a minute and that kind of thing. So that's kind of the basics of this handle. I mean, there's a lot you can do with it. You can leave your top and bottom even thicker than this and give it a really drastic attachment. Um, you can make it very thin um, and mimic, you know, a normal pulled handle easily. Uh, pretty nice. So I'll do one more for you guys um, since we have some new people in here. So again just for the newbies this is the type of handle that i'm doing right now i'm not sure what the real name what we would really call this kind of handle i haven't figured it out yet um hand built handle uh pinched handle i've heard um you can do it big small pretty much any kind of handle that you're going to need you can do this way um and i think it looks kind of uh sophisticated this handle because you can do a lot of your finishing on it rather than pulling a handle putting it on there and messing with it and things get messy that way at least for me I don't know about you guys but so I'm gonna do another one I can do let's do let's do one on this guy because he'll need a little bit of a different shaped handle so this one's gonna be you know a little shorter and squattier of a handle um, and I'll pretty much just go through that same process so I'm going to grab clay, clay that's getting stiffer and stiffer since I've been sitting here. Um, I always grab a little more than I'm going to need, obviously, because it just gives me some wiggle room. And then I'm just going to roll it into like a coil, roll it on my table into a coil. until I get it kind of the, the diameter, like the width where I want it. And this is where, if you were gonna do multiple handles, roll a really nice and long coil and cut them all the same width, and then all of your handles are gonna have the same amount of clay, and they're more likely to look um, the same. They're not, you're not gonna have one that's really big and one that's really small and that kind of thing. Um, the only reason I'm not doing that right now is just because I'm demoing this it's gonna take too much time and an effort to do that right at this minute but um, that's what I normally do is I'll roll out a really nice long coil and cut them all the same for each pot so 
I've got this rolled out now, nice and smooth, and then I'm gonna cut it to like about an inch, maybe a little bit more than an inch. So you can see it's just fat coil right now. And I'm rolling the top and bottom just to smooth out where I cut it and because we're gonna already want that top and bottom to be thicker anyway. All right, and then what we're trying to accomplish is getting kind of this like dog bone shape that we then stretch and manipulate out to look a little closer to this. So it's got that top and bottom that are thicker, thinner middle. So I'm gonna use a rolling pin. You could use anything that has like a curve in it, I'm sure, or you could just use your fingers and roll it like that. I've done that also when I'm too lazy to go get the rolling pin. Um, and I'm just gonna use like one finger at first and kind of roll this out and then two. And then we've got thicker top and bottom, thinner middle. And once I have that, I'm gonna lay it flat down and I'm just gonna flatten it like that. I'm gonna give it one or two on each side to flatten it out. And then we've got that shape. And you can mess with it, make this a little more drastic, thinner, um, and see what happens or make it really thick and see how you like it. It's just really gonna depend on the piece that you're putting a handle on. So I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit worried. This might not have been enough clay, but let's see how this goes. So now that I've got my dog bone shape, I'm just gonna kind of flatten it out on the table so that it sits upright. And then <clears throat> I'm gonna take my fingers and kind of this shape where it's like a triangle, if you wanna call it that, and I'm gonna pinch and push down as my first move here. I'm gonna pinch down. And pinching down is gonna give you that thickness at the bottom that, um, so you're basically giving yourself this right here. So however thick you want that, however wide, however dramatic you want this part is how much you're gonna press down there. And then once I've done that, I'm gonna continue that pinching motion and I'm gonna pinch at the bottom and push up, pinch and push up, pinch, push up. And I'm thinking about how wide I want this to be while I'm doing this. And I'm also thinking about how thick I want that middle part to be because I don't want it to be too thick. And this clay is a little bit dry. So I'm gonna put like just a little bit of water on there. Helps get rid of those um, cracks that are gonna form. And then I'm gonna grab this and flip it over. I'm gonna do that same thing on the other side. Kind of flatten it out so it'll sit upright. And I'm gonna pinch and push down to create that bottom part. And then I can pinch and push up to give it more um, length. And then I'm gonna pinch and pull up because this table, the clay is gonna stick to it. Um, I would recommend trying this on something like a table that is gonna be sticky to the clay. I find it really nice that it's sticking down here and I can kind of pull up from there. Um, if it's not gonna stick, it's much harder to like evenly pull it. Um, so I'm kind of pushing and pulling up that middle part a little bit too. I don't want it to be too thick. And then I'm gonna pull it off here and give a look at it. And you can see it's nice and wide. I think it might need to be a little bit longer so that it'll curve enough to actually go on here without breaking. So I'm just gonna pull up a little bit more on it, make it a little bit longer. pinching and pushing and just lengthening it a little bit. So <clears throat> now we've got that. So if I stick this right now, if I took this, scored it, slipped it and stuck it right on there and it's sticking straight out, it's gonna be really hard to bend this so that the bottom um, can attach there because it's gonna start to crack and break. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit of help to start with and I'm gonna hold it however makes sense to you. And I'm just gonna push on the inside and kind of smooth it, smoothing it out, stretching it a little bit, but it's also bending it um, a little less drastically. 
and then I'll look and see, do I have any cracks? If I do, I'll kind of smooth them out. Um, and then I'll just continue to do that until it's bent enough that I know it's gonna attach on there. I'm trying to make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. And then you can even kind of do that, a little bit of that, push it together slowly, um, make sure there's no cracks or anything that are showing. And then, now that we've got some curve into it, I know that I can attach it and it's not gonna crack. So it's obviously not what I want my final result to be, but we're gonna go ahead and attach it because I'm gonna manipulate it after it's been attached on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and score the attachment. And this is another um, tip I don't know where I learned this or whatever, but so if I pick up a mug, like a, a pot with no handle yet, wherever my thumb hits, that's where I put the top of the handle. So like just right, just right there is where the top of my handle is gonna go. I don't know why, just feels right. That's what I do, if that helps anybody. Um, on this, I can't really pick this up necessarily with one hand, but if I were going to, that's where my thumb would be. So that's where we're gonna kind of put the top of our handle. Um, I don't know if it's a center of gravity thing or if it's just a thing that I started doing and it made sense to me, but there's the tip of the day. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and score the top and bottom of my handle. And then I'm gonna score right where my thumb hits on there because it just makes sense to me. And I don't always score the bottom um, at the same time that I do the top because sometimes I'm not really sure where it's gonna land. Um, if it helps you though, go ahead and score it. I kind of know where it's gonna go on here but I just wanna be safe. Um, once I put it on there, I'll kind of figure it out. So. I'm not gonna use slip, I'm not gonna use a lot of water. I'm just gonna use like dip my finger in and just like a little bit of water, almost kind of around around the scoring and like just a little bit, a teeny little bit in there because I don't want it to be too wet um, or it's gonna slide around and I really want this handle to stick really well because I'm gonna manipulate it um, after I stick it on here. So if you guys can see. So I'm gonna stick it on, I'm gonna give it like a wiggle as I'm sticking it, I'm gonna press on both sides. I'm gonna kind of get in there with my pinching motion and press on each side to make sure it's on there. Smooth it a little bit, give it an extra little press on there. I'm gonna make sure it's straight. So, Thank God we have that curve in there because if I had to take a straight handle and bend it this far, it's gonna crack so badly. So <clears throat> the other trick with these soup mugs I found because this curve is really drastic down here, but that's where I want my handle to hit. Um, sometimes I have to kind of cut a little bit of this off here so it'll just be a little bit easier to stick it on. It's kind of matching the shape of the mug a little bit. So that's a little bit easier for me. Um, so now I know where it's gonna hit. So I'm gonna get under there and do a little scoring on that. So I'm gonna put a little bit of water, not too much, cause again, I want it to stick. And then I'm gonna stick it down. I'm gonna make sure it's pretty even and st straight on there. And then I'm gonna do that pinching motion and press down on each side. I'm, there's no right or wrong way to hold it while you're doing this. I have the foam here just in case I needed to set it down. I do this a little bit differently when I'm not on camera because um, you know, I don't have to hold it in a spot where somebody can see. Sometimes I actually just like hold it on my knee, um, which actually works really well for me. Uh, okay, so we're pretty attached on there. I've got a few little crackies on, I don't know if you can see them on there, some cracks. I'm just gonna use a little bit of water and just smooth them out. I'm not super worried about them unless they're really deep. And adding that water on there now to soak in just a little bit of water. 
is gonna help when you start to stretch it so that there's no more cracks. So now with this one, it is really thick in there, if you can see. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get into the middle and I'm putting pressure top and bottom and just kind of stretching, giving some pressure, lengthening it out. And I, know, I don't know if it looks like much um, is happening, but it is, it's stretching. And then you can kind of get in there with some water and a finger and just turn your finger and it stretches that. And then I'm gonna go in there with that pinching like this and smooth it out on each side to give it that tapered look. Yeah. So <clears throat> I'm also gonna give it like a press down and pull really fast up on the top there because I actually wanna push this up a little bit and that just helps get rid of that clay there and I can push it up and give it that shape, if that makes sense. So <clears throat> again, just getting in there, pinching, pulling, making sure it's tapered enough on the ends to where I like it um, and thick enough in the middle that I like. And I also sometimes, with this one especially, I'll get in here and just do one of those and give it a little bit of a flatness there on the bottom because this is like a one or maybe a two finger handle if I can get it big enough. And then you need that resting spot for your finger under there, if that makes sense. So this is still pretty thick. So I'm gonna continue to stretch it. Yeah. All right, so we're getting there. I'm just gonna, again, with that pinching And it takes a little bit, you know, each pot's a little bit different how you want it to look. Um, and it's gonna take a few times doing this to feel comfortable, just like pulling a handle. And that's why I don't pull handles is because I have not practiced enough, admittedly. Um, I find pulling handles really difficult and that's why I don't wanna even practice it, but really we should all practice that. But this is also gonna take some practice, but I find this to be easier for me. So it may be easier for you. And I like the look of this a lot. So you can see there, it's kind of tapered on the ends, a little bit thicker in the middle. It's got that nice um, thick attachment at the top and the bottom. And I've got my little space there for a finger and I've got it pulled up to a nice shape. So that's kind of the basics of this handle. Um, I would try, do a couple trial runs, see how it feels. Um, basically, if you can get yourself to this dog bone shape, after that, you can do just about anything you want, manipulating it and making your handle. Um, does anyone have questions?